Hi folks, welcome to my 8-bit retro journal. Uh, today I'm going to continue to play around with my uh, TRS-80 pocket computer. Uh, I'm actually going to try something neat, which is to... Um, uh, this is something I tried as a kid. Uh, when I bought this, I bought the, um, the ZX-80 one first uh, in 82, and then six months later I bought this because it was on sale. I think it was a, a, a floor model, and I remember having to ride my bike for 10 miles to... To, to get it at the Radio Shack, and it was only like a $99, so I bought that, and I really liked it because it had a nice modern look, although I, I did like my ZX81 as well. But I, since you could load and save on cassettes for both of these, uh, I remember as a, as a kid I was wondering, you know, well, can I save this on a cassette and then load it into here? Of course, I tried and it didn't work. And I remember asking a teacher, um, and they sort of explained to me why not. And I don't know if I understood it at the time. Of course, I understand it now. But the nice thing with retro computing is I can do this now. I'm going to write a program, basic program on this. I'm going to save it to my um, win, uh, the Windows machine. It's over there. And uh, I'm going to convert that to uh, uh, text. And then I'm going to convert the text to uh, um, a... Uh, uh, back to an audio file that the, T the CX81 TS1000 can read and um, run it on that and then I'm, I'm going to reverse it. All right, so the first thing to do is to actually write a, pro to write a program on the, the, Z the, the TRS-80 pocket computer. Um, so let's do that. And so here it is, uh, again, fresh brand new screen. It's kind of nice. So um, it doesn't have any programs in there. I'm going to go into programming mode and... Uh, so if you look, there's nothing in here. So 10, uh, print, uh, TRS-80, uh, uh, PC-1, says, hi. All right, and then um, there's a little bit of a glare on there, so, and then uh, we're going to do 20, go to 10, and uh, so let's run it. So we got to be in run mode, and so when you run it, you'll see that it actually will print and then pause, and you just have to keep hitting return. Uh, as you're doing that. All right, so there's my program. And so um, so now what I need to do is I need to um, actually um, load it onto my Windows machine, which is, uh, again, I can't see my finger, but it's over there. Um, let me see if I can't uh, quickly show that. So my Windows machine is over there. move my camera that much here so I'm going to use my Windows machine uh, which is uh, an iMac 2011 2011 to run the software but um, uh, let's keep focused on uh, here for now there we go and so let's see if we can't actually get that going so the first thing is I need to um, uh, plug this in and uh, then power it on and power this on. Um, so I want to use a simple audio cable to actually do the conversion. I can't plug it in right away because uh, I need to use the mic to do the recording and then uh, I'll, I'll load it in uh, for the 10 seconds it takes to do it. Um, and then I'm going to convert it. So uh, again, I'm going to type in here C save and we're going to call it PC one. I'm about to uh, uh, capture the program on my Windows machine. I want to use a sound recorder, and sound recorder um, actually, if you uh, uh, you can actually configure it to uh, if you if you set it up with a slash file option uh, output file wave, it, it will actually save it as a wave file instead of a WMA file, which is pretty handy for these conversion programs. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up to start recording. 
and then I'm going to hit uh, C save on my um, pocket computer and it should work. I am going to have to plug in a, uh, the line in, which is going to cause the audio to be missing for just a short time. So here we go. So that was um, uh, only about six or seven seconds. So I'm going to go and save this uh, on my desktop, PC, uh, PC1.wave. OK, and I can quit this now. And so now what I need to do is I need to convert that to a basic. And uh, PK tools actually have a, a nice set of uh, um, uh, functions, they're very similar to the ZX81's uh, tools for converting to intermediate formats. Uh, and so this has a, um, uh, a wave to base command. And so if I do this, uh, it's going to ask me what type of pocket computer. You can actually configure this so it doesn't ask you. And it's a, two, it's a 1211. And when I hit return, it's going to ask me for the file. And voila, here is my basic program. Print TRS-80 PC1 says hi, so I'm just going to save that as uh, on my desktop. And uh, yep. So now what I need to do is I need to convert that um, uh, into a um, P file. And so I have a program that does that. Uh, and so I need my command shell. And so the program that does that is called um, um, CX text to P, and that's uh, in my so it's uh, ZX81 uh, ZX text to P output file is going to be uh, uh, PC1 P, and the input file is of course the basic, and so that's going to generate the um, the PC1 file. Okay, and so the next step is then to again use uh, another tool uh, in here, which is the um, so these these two there's 16 bit applications that are running under Windows XP uh, virtual mode, uh, but uh, so they're going to and so it's going to take a little bit of time to uh, boot up, but they're going to convert uh, the P file into a raw format, and then I'll have to use Audacity uh, to um, uh, convert that into uh, a WAV file, and then I can load it into my ZX81. So um, as this is doing its uh, conversion, and it should take, I mean, right, conversion itself takes a, a bit of time. Uh, so here we have uh, the program. And again, it takes a key file as input, so I'm going to type in zxc.exe, and it's going to get uh, pc1.p as input and use quiet mode. And as, I, uh, as you see that, so it, this is the tape name it gives it. Uh, this is important for the ZX81, although you, you can just ignore that. In the ZX81, you can just type two double quotes and it'll load it. Uh, so this is going to create a file of 951 bytes. And this is going to take a little bit, so I'll probably fast forward over that. OK, so it uh, finished up. So now I have a raw uh, file, and so now what I have to use is Audacity. Uh, and really, I could use Audacity to actually play it into the um, uh, uh, speaker headphones, but uh, I'm just going to use it to convert a, uh, I need to import it as a, a raw data. There we go. And, and the, uh, the particular software does it at uh, 22,050 hertz. And mono and everything else is fine. So you import that, and you can actually um, listen to this just to see how it sounds. Um, yeah. And that's a, a good sounding signal. Um, and so I'm going to now save, export that as a WAV uh, file. So this is PC1 to ZX81 WAV. It's my new file. And uh, so it saves that. I'm done with Audacity. So now what I can do is um, uh, I can set up my um, 
ZX81, which I already generally have. Uh, I just need to have it on the ear jack. I can set this up now. So if I open this up, so first of all, what I want to do is set the uh, playback device to not go to speaker. So I just disable that. Uh, and then I can, if I open this up, uh, stop that. So this is going to go now through. So now uh, I'm going to go back to my camera and uh, we can, uh, let's put this right here on the edge. And so I just need to hit play and it should work. So let's do that. Okay, back on this side, um, I've got my uh, ZX81 plugged into the ear, which is, goes into the earphone jack of my computer. And uh, again, I've got my, um, can't see it, but I can. So I've got uh, the audio thing ready to go. And let's tighten that. There we go. And so um, I'm going to now type in a uh, load, which is J. Oops, uh, shift, and I'm going to hit return here. So this is going to wait for it, and I'm going to hit, and it's loading. Uh, the TV can't handle that signal, uh, so it's going to uh, not show it the whole time. Uh, but it's about maybe 20 seconds left, and it should be uh, done loading. And let's hope that it works. So if it does, we have, um, yep, look at that. So now we have, uh, we have a program, if I run it, TRS-80PC says hi, written on this computer, running on that computer. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go the other way. I'm gonna uh, change that program and I'm gonna try to get it run on this computer. Um, and so, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to edit, edit, nope, there we go. Uh, and here I'm going to uh, just change this to say, uh, Sinclair. CX81 says hi. All right, and so now I'm going to save that. Uh, call it ZX81. Oops, fat fingers. Okay, so uh, I'm going to start this uh, program up again. Uh, and uh, this time, uh, again, I'm going to have to plug in the actual um, connection to the, uh, so just hang, uh, stay with me just for a second. Okay, so it finished the recording, so now I'm going to save that as uh, on the desktop as ZX81 Wave. And uh, <clears throat> so now what I want to do is um, convert that to uh, um, a raw file in Audacity because I need to... Uh, uh, then generate a, a P file. So I'm um, going into Audacity. Um, I'm going to uh, import this WAV file. And uh, ZX81, there it is. Uh, I do have to do a little bit of work here. Uh, so what I can do is, I believe if I amplify the whole thing, uh, 
you can see that the bottom one is the uh, the ZX81 signal. So then I have to kind of split them up in mono, and then I can get rid of this track. And then what I need to do <clears throat> is it's almost the right signal, but I usually maybe about tw <clears throat> about twelve uh, extra decibels, and then uh, can delete some of the. Uh, doesn't need all that uh, crap in the front. And that in the back. Also cut. And so if you play this, it should sound pretty good. So maybe just a tad louder. Uh, maybe 13. So what I've learned is that you don't want to see the, the level move at all. So you can see here it's not moving. So that's a good, that's a good sign. All right, so I want to save that as raw audio. So export. Uh, yep. So export that. And we're going to do that on the desktop. There we go. So now we have the raw audio. We can click that. And again, we're going to use the same, uh, this other software now that's uh, ZXD. It's the other utility part of the pair uh, that's going to um, um, convert uh, a raw file to a P file. And then when we have a P file, we convert that to text. And then finally, uh, the P pocket, the POC tools uh, are going to do a much, uh, do a nice easy job on, on converting that to an audio file for the TRS-80 pocket computer. So um, again, uh, zxd.exe. I'm going to give it the zx81 uh, raw file and again quiet mode. So, and we'll know right away if this works or not. If it recognizes the file, um, uh, it'll populate the proper title. So there you go, ZX80. Yeah, so if, if it's getting junk and it's not reading it properly, then generally you get a bunch of question marks and whatnot. And I think the size of this file is much smaller. <clears throat> I think it's like 100 and, uh, oh, 186, yeah. Uh, so this goes pretty quickly, so I don't think I'll need to speed it up, uh, although maybe I will just a, just a little bit. OK, and it finished. So we can just close that up. <clears throat> so now we have um, uh, our ZX81 P file. And uh, the next step is to then, again, uh, run a command shell. And here, we're going to um, uh, go to the desktop and then run ZX81 P to text, and we're going to give it the P file, and we're going to pipe it out to ZX81 Bass. And uh, that should give us a basic file, and here we have it. Single ZX1 says hi, go to 10, and so now the final step is we're going to open Pocket Tools, and there is a Bass to Wave command, very similar. It's going to ask us for the basic file, so ZX81 basic. And here it just wants to now um, uh, basically uh, load that into the um, pocket computer. So let me set that up really quickly. Um, so now uh, I want to load uh, the, um, the ZX81 program right here. So I I got this plugged into the ear, and this is plugged into the um, uh, uh, earphone jack of my uh, laptop. Uh, I guess, again, it's hard to see that. But uh, so the laptop, the another laptop, the desktop has the earphone jacks behind it. And so um, I've got it uh, set up for that. Make sure we line that up nicely. And so I'm going to just remove any program that's in here. 
and then I'm going to uh, load and the program oh, it's actually C load cassette load load and uh, it's called ZX81 and uh, we're gonna run that here we go I'm gonna hit return on here and it runs pretty quickly and you can see um, so if I uh, turn this off turn this off remove that uh, again just so you can see it a little better if I turn this sorry if I turn if I, yeah, if I turn this on and it's in run mode if I type run ta-da ZX81 says hi and we've had success look at that so um, the final thing I want to do and I came up with this idea uh, is that I want to um, so I'm going to plug in my uh, Sinclair QL. There we go. Um, I actually wanted to leave it off while I was doing the ZX81 loading because somehow it starts interfering and adding noise to the audio signal. But um, so what uh, I wrote on the ZX81, let me actually change screens here. is uh, it's gonna take a second so if I load this up uh, and go uh, exec MD4 so this is my ZX simulator it's gonna run maybe I'll type from this side it's easier and uh, again, this is my ZX81 ROM emulator. And what I wanted to show you next is, so um, is that I have, uh, I wrote another program that's a bit more uh, uh, in depth than just uh, hello. So if I load it in here, MDV4 uh, hex. This is a little hex conversion program. It's always useful to have. And I wrote it uh, pretty generic, basic. Um, I, 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 I found sort of the differences between the two and tried to avoid any of the, 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 the unique things um, that uh, one language has over the other. Uh, and, uh, so if you look at the listing, so this is a hex converter. Um, it uses returns, it uses go tos, go subs. If I list uh, 200, it's about a little over half a K in, uh, of memory. Uh, and again, if I run it, uh, enter decimal. So if I if I can go five, six, seven, eight, uh, what it does is it computes the hexadecimal value. And again, the first it says digit one. That's the that's the the, the rightmost digit. So it's so the hexadecimal is 162E for 5678. Um, and this also actually runs on the QL. So it's a, a very, uh, so if I do L run MDV4 hex bass, you'll see that uh, it's going to run. Uh, and, and I can now type 5678. And gives you the same thing uh, uh, 162e let's make sure that uh, oh I think it's 8765 let's just verify that 5678 162e so they're the same okay uh, so anyway, so I have this already as a as a um, basic program on my uh, on my um, laptop um, desktop. I keep calling it a laptop. And what I want to do is uh, create a WAV file that can load uh, that can dual load on both the um, 
uh, pocket computer as well as um, pocket computer as well as the ZX81 at the same time. And I can do this by using different stereo channels because they only need a mono signal. And I do have a splitter. So that would be kind of a cool thing to do. So uh, that's the last thing I'm going to do just with playing around with uh, audio data on old 80s computers. I call this my retro LAN. Um, so uh, uh, tongue in cheek. But uh, so let's do that. OK. So this is the hex that bass file <clears throat> that I showed you in the QL. And again, it's pretty straightforward, basic. I kind of try to avoid some special things that either the Zeke CD one or the TRS-80 pocket computer do, but it is generic, you know, lets, returns, ghost ups, etc. And it's not very big. It's about that's about half a K. The TRS-80 pocket computer can do one and a half K. The Time Mixing Chrome 1000 can do two K. The Zeke CD one, which I'm not using, is one K. So this, there are plenty of space for this small program. All right, so let's convert this to um, uh, an audio file for the pocket computer. So it's going to want me to pick hex.baz. There we go. And hit return. And so this is going to, uh, so this is actually already generated the code. So if I go under wave, you can see this is already 17 seconds in size. <clears throat> um, so it basically just quickly, so it generates this rather quickly. Um, which is pretty impressive um, uh, compared to the ZX81 tools. But again, I'm running them on a virtual box uh, because they're 16 bits. So I'm going to move that here. And so the next, uh, uh, what I'm going to use is um, the ZX81 tools. For that, I need a command shell, CMD. And I don't know why it's so big. I should probably. <clears throat> uh, so here, uh, I'm going to go to the desktop and CX81, and here I want to create um, a text to P uh, dash O hex dot P hex uh, bass, and this is going to generate a uh, P file for me. And that's what I'm going to need when I use um, this ZXC to EXE tool. I'm going to take a second to again launch. <clears throat> again, this is a Windows XP mode, is what's causing this to slow down. Um, and so, again, I'll just fast forward over that. Um, that'll be easy enough to do um, uh, when the program's running. Um, I might not fast forward over this because it's going to start up here in any second. <clears throat> this part's not that slow. Yep. So here we go. Uh, and so I'm going to run zxc.exe hex.p and quiet option so we don't hear yeah, so it has to basically write this um, this thirteen hundred eighty four bytes, which isn't very much, but can take some time. So I'll I'll, I'll fast forward over this. And that's it. <clears throat> um, okay, so I'll finish that. So now we have a raw wave file. And what we want to do next is we want to, um, again, open up Audacity. And we're going to uh, load in the, um, so we're going to load in the, import the raw data first. So that's hex.raw right here. And it's 2205. That's what the software does. Um, and that looks pretty good. And we can actually enable this again, just to see what it sounds like. I think this is going to sound pretty good. And um, then we can also uh, import uh, the wave file now. That's the hex.wave uh, right there. And again, if we want to mute this one, we can then play. That's also pretty good. And again, we can unmute them both. Um, and so, again, this is going to be on the, um, so the left channel is going to be the ZX81. Uh, and the right channel is going to be, uh, and so now we can basically save this file, uh, save as, <clears throat> or export as a WAV file. And I think everything is, Yep, and we're going to, uh, so this is going to be the hex uh, 
ZX81 PC1 WAFA that's going to end up uh, no we don't want to save the project so that's going to end up right here and so now uh, we can once again um, disable that and uh, start this up uh, so um, yep I'm gonna have this ready to go and let's go back to the uh, computer the, the, the regular camera okay I'm back um, so here we have uh, uh, the ZX81 is hooked to the left channel and the I have a, my splitter cable and the um, TRS-80 pocket computer is on the right channel um, and so let's actually set these up now to load and then on this one it's C load uh, the program name was hex uh, and we can start them both boom and boom let's see what happens yep so the CX81 is having its program and the TRS-80 pocket computer is loading its um, it should end sooner because um, it's it's a shorter load time oh and it's already finished look at that so I can turn this off unplug it and let's see if we have a uh, running program on here there we go Just hold it like that so uh, turn it on if I run it let's make sure you can see it sorry Uh, enter, enter decimal, five, six, seven, eight. Digit one is E. Digit two is two. Digit three is six. Digit four is one. Done. End of program. And then again, let's do the same for this one. Run. Five, six, seven, eight. Digit one is E, two is two, six, and one. All right? So that's that. Look at that. That's pretty cool. So a single audio file, uh, and I can load both at the same time. This reminds me of a, a video, uh, a YouTube video where they load on a, uh, it's a Apple E and maybe a ZX Spectrum, an, an Apple a 2E and a ZX Spectrum that uh, from t from a TV signal um, a loading, uh, but they went sequentially. This is doing it in parallel because I can use the um, the, the the stereo part of it, the audio signal. So anyway, that's that's kind of the fun things you can do in retro computing nowadays with the the power of modern computers and uh, and utilize some of the features of the older computers like the cassette in and out. And, the, and I always wanted to do that as a kid, and so I finally was able to do that. So that was a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed that video, and uh, this will probably be my last TRS-80 for a while. I want to get back to the QL and the uh, um, SD Wi-Fi uh, file service that I want to create. Uh, so i got to do some hacking on that. So anyway, thanks for joining me, and stay safe.